Hello my beautiful friends, it's Amanda here and today we're talking about some new launches from ColourPop. We have a new mega palette and a new lip formula that both released yesterday, so I'm posting this video on Friday the 4th. This stuff launched on the ColourPop site on Thursday the 3rd. All of this new stuff is currently available. If you decide to purchase anything from this video, I do have an affiliate code that will save you 10% on pretty much everything on the ColourPop site. The code is just Amanda. Some exclusions do apply to that code, especially if things are already on sale, so make sure you keep an eye on your cart totals because I want to make sure that you get the best deal possible. Let's start off with this new Mega Palette. This is the Rock Candy Palette. This one's priced at 34 US dollars. Let's take a close-up look at the packaging and this palette now. The Rock Candy palette has this really interesting pebbly texture. It definitely fits with the rock theme. Now on the box, we do have a very teeny tiny list of ingredients that is only available on the outer box. You will not find that on the back of the palette itself. Now looking at the actual palette, this is the exact same shape and size as the other mega palettes. So Bare Necessities, Stone Cold Fox, all of those, same shape and size, same pan size. All of the shadow names are listed on the back. And when we take a close up look here, you'll see there are three shades that carry that little eye safety warning. That means that these shades are technically not intended for the eye area. These are all pressed glitters. I don't recommend wearing pressed glitters on the eye, but if you're an adult, you can choose to do what you want. Just please use caution and just be aware. Okay, there's no mirror in this palette, just like the other mega palettes. And when we take a look inside here, I think it's pretty obvious where the pressed glitters are, but I'm going to point them out to you. It's this silvery shade called Ring of Fire, and then these two metamorphic and set shale. I think that it's pretty clear the layout here is intended as color grouped columns. If you look at each vertical column here, you'll see a the shades go light to dark. There's a variety of finishes in each one of these color groups, but I do think this is really how it's meant to be viewed, meant to be used, and I like it when they do more intentional layouts like this. I think it's more user-friendly and it's just more pleasing to the eye, at least for me. The Rock Candy palette has 13 mattes, three mattes with glitter, the three pressed glitters that we already looked at, and then 11 regular shimmer shades. So a variety of finishes and a decent variety of depth of tone too. I do have a lot, a lot of comparisons for this Rock Candy palette. First, I just want to show you the finger and brush swatches of this palette. I swatched these 10 at a time in their little color group columns. So you'll see the first two columns, the middle two, and then the last two swatched together. I do think the layout is designed that way, so that's why I swatched it that way. As always, finger swatches are on top, and then each corresponding brush swatch is directly below, and then we'll jump into the palette comparisons. I think it's pretty clear from these swatches that the Rock Candy palette performs much, much better with a brush than it does with finger swipe swatches. I just do one swipe of color for both my finger and brush swatches, so it's pretty clear here that these matte shadows are responding a lot better to the brush swatch. I don't use a dampened brush or anything like that, and I don't brush swatch my pressed glitters. They're not meant to be applied that way, and frankly, I don't want to get a bunch of glitter in my brush since I use the same brush to keep my swatches consistent across the whole palette. I also don't use any primers, I don't dampen my brush or anything like that. It's just the shadows straight onto my skin. That way you can get a variety of application methods and see really what that looks like. Now the rest of the palette after those first two columns seems a lot more consistent in performance to me. However, you will see me using those purpley shades later on my eye and I think that 
it's really important to see the performance on the eye as well because they look so much nicer actually in use versus these swatches. This is exactly why I show you finger swatches, brush swatches, tutorials, because it's not always as simple as a swatch to decide how a shadow performs. The only shimmer shade that I find lacking in performance is this gray shade in the very last column. It's called No Pressure, and maybe it's just meant to be a softer, more satiny type of shimmer, which is fine. I do like a variety of textures in my palettes, but after all of these really smooth, really opaque metallic shades, I did find this No Pressure shade to be just a little bit of a letdown. Now we're going to get into the comparisons and the palette comparisons are pretty important for this particular palette. I know it's everybody's favorite time. It's definitely my favorite part of the videos too, but for this palette, there are so many what I would consider to be dupes or at least close enough to give you the same eye look. Almost every single palette I compare in this video is going to be close enough to dupe the look. So at my conclusion after doing all of these swatches is if you have a handful of these palettes, particularly if you already have Stone Cold Fox and Bare Necessities, you definitely already have these shades. And personally, I don't like pressed glitters. So I like that Stone Cold Fox and Bare Necessities don't have any glitters. Maybe you've been waiting for the perfect mix of those two palettes. Maybe you are somebody who really loves the glitters. So I'm not saying that there's no reason for this rock candy palette to exist, but I am saying if you already have Stone Cold Fox and Bare Necessities, there's really nothing that's going to be added to your collection with this rock candy palette, particularly because if you're somebody who does really like pressed glitters, then you already have these pressed glitter shades as well. They're silver, copper, and like a champagne-y brown. So if you love glitter, I'm sure you have those staple neutral glitters to begin with. So just taking a look at these comparisons, it's pretty crazy how similar or exactly the same so many of these shades are. And I do a lot of comparisons. Typically, it's not this exact. And I was kind of blown away by it. I kept triple checking as I was swatching. Like, did I swatch the same palette twice? <laughs> because so many of these are really, I mean, look at the mattes. These are really the same shades and even the ones that are slightly different, you're still going to get the exact same look on the eye. They're neutrals. They're going to end up looking the same. Again, I completely understand that most people don't have this volume of palettes. I have these for comparison because this is my job. So I totally get that there's a place for this palette in the world. It is just a little bit shocking to me how similar it is to so many of their other palettes. It just seems like maybe this could have been an opportunity to do something a little bit more out of the box. But you know, people love neutrals. I'm not here to hate on it. I know that some people are going to love this and find this exact formula, this exact combination of shades to be their favorite, the one they're waiting for, their go-to palette. And honestly, I love that. I'm glad there's such a variety to choose from. I just wish maybe there was a little bit more variety added to the mix with the addition of this palette. So if you love it, if this is your perfect mega palette, then I think that's great. Personally, I would prefer to have Bare Necessities and Stone Cold Fox over this Rock Candy palette, but you know, that's just one girl's opinion, and maybe you disagree and you like to have sort of the best of both worlds in one mega palette, and if that's the case, then this is the palette for you. It is definitely a perfect cross between Bare Necessities and Stone Cold Fox, so here it is, the palette that you've been looking for, possibly, perhaps, maybe.
Now that you've got all the info and the swatches, the comparisons with this Rock Candy palette, I'm going to show you a tutorial for the look that I'm wearing now. That way you can see these shadows actually in action on the eye. And because this is a pretty basic look, I'm just going to give you my thoughts on this palette while you watch these shadows in action. That way we can keep it rolling because we do have a bunch of lip products to get to as well. So let's jump into that eye look and you can hear my final thoughts on this palette before we get to the glowing lips. It's probably pretty obvious from the thoughts that I gave during the comparisons. I do wish that they had gone a different direction with this mega palette. We just already have these shades so many times over and I love the idea of a candy themed palette, especially for spring. They could have done something really cute with a bunch of pastels with some duochromes. I don't know, I wouldn't even be that mad about some glitter as long as it was some different colors. <laughs> you know, I'm still never gonna recommend glitter, but that's neither here nor there. I think it would have been really fun to see a springy, pastel meets duochrome candy themed palette or you know I'm never gonna stop recommending this a purple mega palette would be fantastic you know I love my purple palettes and after I was sort of let down by the all amethyst palette maybe you know we could have been redeemed as purple palette lovers by a really great variety of purples, maybe even mix in some neutrals or some pinks or something in a more purpley mega palette. And even that could have been candy themed. I just was wishing for a little bit more color, a little bit more spring vibes. Maybe for my next build your own palette video, I'll make a springy mega palette, like what I wish the rock candy palette would have been. I don't know. We'll see. Let me know if you're interested in that. This palette performed great on the eyes. It was definitely much better than in swatch and my eye look looks great. I just wish that I had a little bit more color, a little bit more candy, a little bit more springtime, but performance wise, I can't complain. It's definitely a cute look. Now let's talk about these new lip products. This new formula is called the Glowing Lip. These are priced at seven US dollars a piece. They have the same packaging style as the newly released Blotted Lips. It's just the formula that's different. They look very, very similar because it's the same packaging component. This one just says Glowing Lip instead of Blotted Lip. They're both sheer to medium coverage that's meant to be buildable, so you can wear it one layer, kind of sheared out look or you can build up to more opacity. That's really where the similarities end. It's the component and that buildable factor, but the blotted lip is meant to be that diffused, soft, matte kind of look, and these are definitely very creamy. It sort of feels like a cross between a cream lipstick and a tinted lip balm. The formula and the finish is very, very different. Before we get to the swatches of the glowing lips, I want to give you a close-up look at the packaging. The glowing lip outer packaging all is exactly the same, but there are these little stickers on top that tell you which shade is which. Just FYI, in case you order more than one, I don't want you to be alarmed when you see the same box over and over again. Now, these are very lightly scented. I have to really, really sniff the lipstick to get the scent. And it's definitely like half waxy lipstick smell and then half very, very light, sweet, probably a vanilla type of scent. It's a classic lipstick type of aroma. It's really, really not strong at all. I always like to mention this because I know some people have an aversion to fragrance in their makeup. So there is just the lightest little sweet vanilla lipsticky type of scent here, but really nothing overwhelming like the just a tint lips. Like I mentioned, these are meant to be buildable. So I'm going to show you one swipe swatches and then I'll show you a built up swatch. 
That way you can see on the arm what these all look like side by side. I think it helps to get an idea of what these colors look like in comparison to each other versus individual lip swatches. And I want you to see the difference in coverage between the one swipe more sheer wear type of look and a more built up look. I do prefer the more opaque coverage and I think that that's more useful for lip swatches so I will be showing you. So that's how I wear them in my life and that's how I'm going to wear them for the lip swatches but I did want you to get an idea of what this buildable formula really means. Here's the one swipe more sheer coverage swatches. These just glide on so effortlessly and I had to be careful not to press too hard on them because they are so soft that if I really went hard on my swatches, I could kind of smush them, especially on that little sharp edge, you know, when you twist them up and they have that nice clean sharp edge. So I had to be gentle and as you can see here once the opacity is built up they're really not streaky which I was expecting a little bit of streakiness or patchiness because these are a more glossy very very creamy formula sometimes it's hard to get a great coverage but I'm actually really surprised by these they're comfy they're opaque and they did not leave any stains on my arm. This is something that I was expecting at least from the more reddish colors and no stains in sight. Now let's take a look at the lip swatches and I'm going to do the same thing here that I did with the rock candy tutorial and just give you all my thoughts while we look through these lip swatches. Let's check out what all these glowing lips shades look like actually on. I just want to say up front I really, really like this lip formula. Now, this is not meant to be transfer proof at all. This isn't a very long wearing type of lip product. This is not going to be a quote unquote mask proof type of lip product. This definitely transfers. It definitely needs to be reapplied. It is a creamy, almost balmy type of texture and I love it. It's so, so comfy. I don't mind having to touch it up. I like reapplying my lip product, especially when it's something that's this nourishing. And I actually really like all of the colors. I can see myself wearing these, just throwing them on. All of the shades were really flattering. None of them came off super streaky or hard to apply. They were just across the board, very pleasant, very easy, this is the first new lip formula since the glossy lip stains that I'm really, really all about and wanting to wear all the time. I definitely think that this is the better purchase versus the Rock Candy palette. Like I said, I think there's a place for that palette in somebody's collection, but these are a lot more exciting to me. This is what I would recommend and I really like all the shades. I think my favorites are La Cienega, which I'm wearing in the talking portions. I also really like Museum Date, and I like the deepest brown shade that you're about to see called Status. These are all really great. I can see them looking good on everyone, different styles, different skin tones. I just love this. I hope they expand this line. Personally, I like these more than the blotted lips, but that just comes down to a finish preference. Yep, these are great. Now's the time when I want to hear what you think about these products. Are you interested? Have you already picked them up? Are you waiting for a sale? Are you adding them to your wish list? I always love to hear what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! I can't tell from my viewfinder if you can tell what color the sweater is. It looks way darker on my viewfinder than it is in person, but it's this really pretty rich purpley color. It's like a warm... There we go. Now you can see. It's so pretty. It's called Rock Candy, but there aren't any candy references. All the shade names are rock references. I don't... I don't know why. The rock thing I get, 
the candy between the shade names and the colors. I just, I don't get candy. I get rocks. I don't get candy. I don't know. I'm winging it. I am always winging it. Except for with my eyeliner. Otherwise, always winging it. Get it? Because I don't wear eyeliner. Okay. We get it. Hmm? Hmm? That's what the... Hmm. <laughs> this eye look is really cute. I mean, I could do this eye look with about 12,000 other palettes that I have. But it's cute. I... Hmm. Uh, okay, editing Amanda. You know, fix past Amanda's mistakes. Good luck to you on that one. It's fine. This one is... Ah! Almost dropped it. Museum date. I mean, my most recent museum date was making my husband go to look at my Animal Crossing museum, so... Pretty sure that counts. He liked it, for the record. Can we just have a moment here for the matching nail game? where I painted my nails to match my favorite shades in the palette. <laughs> because is life really worth living if you're not going to be this extra? Yes, it is. Absolutely. But still. Anyway. I don't know if that made sense, but we're going with it. We did it. We made this video. Hooray. The heat kicking on is my signal to end this video because it's so loud. Someday. Thanks for watching. I'm happy you're here and I just, you know, I just love your face and I will see it back here again real soon. Okay, have a good one. Okay, see you soon. Okay, bye.